Inomina Tarn is the name of a small body of water in a hollow on the back of haystacks, enclosed by rocky knolls on all sides. In summer, dragonflies and damselflies play among the reeds and bog bean which fringe its glinting waters, and at lunchtime the edge of the tarn becomes a magnet for fellwalkers to sit and eat their sandwiches. The name appears to have originated with a local mountaineer from Cockermouth, Dick Hall, who, in 1933, wrote to John Bartholomew and Son, the Edinburgh mapmakers, suggesting that the tarn, then unnamed on Bartholomew's one-inch map of the Lake District, should be called the Innominate Tarn. He'd long called it that, he said, having once asked Alan Nelson of Gatesgarth the name of that small, dark pool among the rocks. It has near Nyam, said Alan, and so Innominate Tarn it became. The rock-climbing pioneers, drawn to the freedom of the high places and the exhilaration of days spent on the fells, experienced something which went far beyond aesthetic pleasure in views revealed by breaking mist or low sun. The Mancunian cragsman, Lehman Oppenheimer, who had an intense passion for the fells, found formal religion oppressive, a feeling which came to him suddenly during a memorial service for Queen Victoria in the church at Grasmere. The following day, which was a Sunday, he went out into the fells to a church of a different kind. It was a better church, this, than the one in the valley, and more inspiring, he wrote. Here life was no dream-like interlude between two eternities. It was joy, reality, consciousness of the vaster, all-enfolding spirit. He found communion in the fells. So strong can be the call of the fells that some seek a resting place on the tops after death. Cremation, which became increasingly common from the early 20th century, provided an opportunity for the physical remains of the departed to be cast to the winds on the fells, forging a perpetual link to a loved place. How many fell walkers have asked for their ashes to be scattered there, I don't know. Certainly the best known walker of them all, Alfred Wainwright did, all I ask for, at the end, he wrote, is a last long resting place by the side of Innominate Tarn on haystacks, where the water gently laps the gravelly shore and the heather blooms and pillar and gable keep unfailing watch. His widow duly honoured his request after his death in 1991. There must have been numerous similar quiet acts of remembrance as family members have carried out one last wish for a loved one to bind them forever to a corner of the world that they loved in life. How many have stood for a moment in silence, shaking the ashes out into the wind, which blows them back into the moss and rock, sending a scattering across the jackets and faces of the bereaved. If death is no more than a turning of us over from time to eternity, in the words of the early Quaker William Penn, where better then to seek an eternal resting place than in the timelessness of the fells.